speaking of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, we have the meeting where we vote. In the next few minutes, we'll begin that. We'll have our public hearing, and we'll explain the telephone numbers on that. Following this particular meeting will be our briefing session for the meeting of May 6th. We will begin this meeting with an invocation from Dr. Bill Campbell, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Richard Linville. Please raise, rise if you can. Bill. Good yes. afternoon. May we pray? Before any important undertaking, we should invoke the blessings of the spiritual authorities to whom we look for guidance and direction. Forgive us when our worries and desires seem to get the best of us and we lose sight of the generosity of the powers that be and those who lend a hand to assist us in every day. Guide us when we experience the trials and tribulations of life. Help us as we weather the storms. Guide those who look to you as a source for strength and shelter. Be with our civic leaders, committees, and public servants who attempt to do the work that needs to be done in our communities and our state. Now may this meeting, which has been properly called to order, be conducted in harmony, and when we dismiss, may we go forth in peace. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before our meeting started, uh, our county manager said that day is also tax day when you're supposed to pay your taxes, and it's also, didn't you say, laundry day, national laundry day? National laundry day. And Commissioner Kaplan, what did you say? I would clean our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't resist that. <laughs> I actually think it's been moved. <laughs> Citizens who are interested in participating in the public hearing, which will be held in just a few minutes, that portion of the meeting, we want you to call a telephone number, and I'm going to give it to you twice, so write it down or try to remember it, 336-422-1200. That is, if you have a problem or a need or an interest that involves the county and you want us to know about it, all you have to do is make a phone call, and uh, the clerk to the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, Ashley Sloop, will answer the phone. She will ask you to hold, and then you'll be on when uh, the time comes on the agenda. Telephone number again is 336-422-1200. Don't forget to give us that call when you are ready. We continue now with Joshua Swift. Forsyth County Public Health Director with a COVID-19 update. Mr. Swift, please begin. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. I'll start my report uh, with uh, an update of our cases. Uh, our total cases so far is 34,201. Uh, in the last 14 days, we've had 888 uh, new cases. So that brings our average cases per day to 63 per day. And last week when I came to you, our average was 45 per day. So we have seen uh, an uptick in the number of cases in the last uh, week. Our total deaths since the beginning of the pandemic is 367. Uh, this next slide is an update from what I showed you in previous weeks to show the number of lab tests and cases over the past uh, 400 days since the start of the pandemic. Uh, and you can see we have seen an uptick in the last week in the number of lab tests and then also the number of cases of COVID-19 in the community. Uh, this next slide uh, was shared with you uh, over the course of uh, six or eight weeks uh, a few months ago, but I'm bringing this one back. It's the number of new cases per 100,000 uh, over the past 14 days in Forsyth County. You can see how from January to uh, early March we declined but then how we've started to see an uptick in the number of cases in the last uh, uh, 14 days from the end of March to 14. Uh, this next slide is, is a, a new slide. We, uh, we have a weekly report that comes out that shows our total number of cases with the percentage broken down by age group. Uh, but I, what I asked our epidemiologist, Dr. Lavette Miller, was to look back over the last 
two months. To look at the number of cases by age group uh, and pull that out, like how, how the cases are coming week to week by age group. And you can see uh, that the number um, of 15 to 24 year olds were the highest, they were our, uh, accounted for our, most of our cases in early February, basically the, the, those uh, three weeks from 2 7 until 2 27. Then they went down, but you can see in the last month, the last few weeks, from 4 4 to 4 10, the 15 to 24 year old range has been the reason for our uptick in cases. Uh, looking at our hospitalizations, those numbers are, are much lower than they were in the past. Uh, I believe that's a result of the vaccine campaign and the number of individuals that are vaccinated in Forsyth County, but we are seeing a, a slight increase since late March until 410. We went from 33 to 43 uh, hospital, hospitalized Forsyth County residents in our Forsyth County hospitals. Uh, looking at the vaccine, as of April the 13th, 26.4% uh, of Forsyth County residents are fully vaccinated. That's 100,786 residents. And the number of Forsyth County residents who are partially vaccinated is 33.2% of the population, 126,802. When you see now, if you look at the fully vaccinated individuals broken down by age and race, you can see that the majority of individuals 65 and over and 75 and over have been uh, fully vaccinated, 65.6% and 69.7%. Then you can see as we go down into the younger populations, 50 to 64, 25 to 49, and especially the 18 to 24 year olds, much less uh, vaccinated, uh, much less those population are fully vaccinated. On the uh, right hand side of the screen, you're looking at the by race, you can see 17.1% of African Americans have been uh, fully vaccinated in Forsyth County. 26.8% of white residents are fully vaccinated and 11.7% of Hispanic residents are fully vaccinated. Uh, this next slide looks at individuals that are at least partially vaccinated. That's one dose of Pfizer or Moderna. And on the left, you can see it broken down by age. 77% of those over 75 are partially vaccinated and you can see those numbers going down, but there's a drastic drop off when you go from 65 to 74 category to the 50 to 64 and then as you get younger. Uh, on the right, you can see the breakdown by race. Uh, almost 22% of African Americans in Forsyth County are at least partially vaccinated, 33% of uh, white residents and 15.8% of Hispanic residents. Vaccine eligibility, last week on April 7th, all adults in North Carolina, 16 and over, are uh, eligible for vaccine. We're continuing to focus our outreach efforts on our, our historically marginalized populations. And we're allowing walk-ups and same-day appointments at the fairgrounds, at the Winston-Salem fairgrounds, uh, with evening hours to allow more access for the community uh, as we're open now with Group 5 and all adults are eligible for the vaccine. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that has been uh, on the news uh, very much lately. Uh, you can see that 6.8 million Americans have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and there have been six reported U.S. cases of a, of a rare and severe blood clot after receiving the J&J &J vaccine. All six cases occurred in women 18 to 48 with 6 to 13 days of vaccination. We have a very small supply of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We still believe and trust that it is a safe and effective vaccine, and, and this is just a, another reason to trust the process that we have such uh, good processes in place to see, to get these one in a million U.S. cases of, of this rare severe blood clot. Uh, so that shows that the system and surveillance is working uh, and we look forward to being able to use the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again in the future. But right now we're still uh, providing the Pfizer vaccine and Moderna uh, to populations um, in the community. So that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take uh, okay. any questions or comments. Uh, Question, sir. I'm sorry, go right ahead, Commissioner sorry. Kaplan. Is there a vaccine for under the age of 17 now? Uh, so Pfizer vaccine is eligible for those 16 and over, but Pfizer is working on, uh, we do expect in the next month possibly that Pfizer could be approved for those 12, 13, 14, and 15 years of age. But 
your statistics are you when you talk about the percentage of people being vaccinated and then you break it down by age the 17 and under is like 0. 0.0 something i can't remember 0. 0.01 or something are they included in your number of how many Forsyth County citizens have been vaccinated? I will have to, I will talk to my epidemiologist, Mr. Kaplan, and I will uh, get back to you on that. Okay, so one, while you're doing that, if you took out the zero to 17, I'd like to know what percentage of Forsyth County residents have been vaccinated. And, and with your numbers, I assume it's gonna be higher. Yes, sir. Thanks. Additional comments Mr. or questions for Mr. Swift? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Wisenhunt. Hey, Joshua, number one, again, thank you for everything you do. And according to NACO, today is National Public Health Day. So we're very proud of you and all our public health workers. Um, on, on this percentage, do you know what the goal of the governor's office is, the percentage for people being vaccinated before we can fully reopen? I do not know the governor's exact goal. Uh, you know, our goal was to, uh, and what we've been hearing all along for herd immunity, Commissioner Wisenhunt, was to reach uh, 70 to 75 percent. But I can just tell you that um, over the past three weeks, we've seen a drastic slowdown in the demand for the vaccine. Uh, at first, we th the, the, the week of Easter, was it started to slow down. Then the week after that was uh, most schools were on spring break. And even now, we're, seeing, uh, we're still seeing a slowdown in the demand for the vaccine. Uh, and that's concerning because we're still seeing COVID spread in the community. Uh, well, by your numbers, um, 65 and older, um, we're over 70% vaccinated. So I would think it's the younger generation that's keeping us closed. So maybe we can reach out to these folks and say, we want to reopen if you'll help us do that. Yes, ma'am. Additional comments, questions? Thank you, Mr. Swift. Appreciate your report. Commissioners, we have a number of uh, public hearing items that we're going to uh, vote on here in the next few minutes. First item on the agenda is a public hearing in an ordinance uh, named Section 12.2 of the UDO pertaining to traffic impact study standards, otherwise known as UDO CC6. Madam Clerk, have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I will declare the public hearing closed. Do I hear a motion? To move. Motion to approve by Commissioner Martin. Second by? Second. Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing on an ordinance to amend Section 4.5. 1.6 of the UDO pertaining to the affordable housing bonus uh, and its density provision. Madam Clerk, have you received any comments in favor or opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. And I'll declare the public hearing closed. Do I hear a motion? Good. Motion by Commissioner Martin. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Third item on the agenda is a public hearing on an ordinance to amend sections 5.2.30, 5.2.31, and 11.2 of the UDO containing to pertaining the use of standards and decisions and definitions for family group homes, otherwise known as UDO CC9. Madam Clerk, have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. And I'll declare the public hearing closed. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing on an ordinance to name unnamed road uh, segments 
uh, off Bruce Creek Road with un unincorporated areas of Forsyth County, Cruise Way. Madam Clerk, have you received any amendments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. And I'll declare the public hearing closed. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Richard Linville. Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Following the requirements of Session Law 2020.3, the Board will continue to receive public comments on this matter for until 4 p.m. on April 16th, 2021. I wish to uh, submit a comment to all of the people who have been waiting because this is your opportunity to make your comments dealing with what you think are the problems, needs, and interests confronting Forsyth County in some manner. And if you'd like to call us, the number is 336-703-2020 uh, for directions. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the zoning petition of Dennis Weevil and Edna Edwards, zoning docket F-1599, set forth in agenda item six. First speaker on this item will be Aaron King from the Planning and Development Services of Forsyth County. Mr. King. All right, Mr. Chairman, let me pull this up. Did, did, did we get item five or are we going to item six? I might have missed something there. I think we're on item six. Uh, okay. I think no. we missed item five. We're on item five, Mr. Chairman. Sorry? We are on item five. We're on Mr. item Chairman. five. <laughs> Thank you, um, Mr. King, because one of our commissioners said it was item six, but um, the person who really counts <laughs> said it's item five. So that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, let me get this. Okay. Item 5, uh, F1598. Can everyone see the slides okay? Yes, sir. All right. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, item 5 is only case F1598, and this is a request to rezone uh, 26, almost 26 and a half acres located on the east side of Twin Creek Road, north of Bunker Hill Sandy Ridge Road. And this request is a special use rezoning from RS30 to RS20S. You can see Legacy's Growth Management Plan with the subject property identified there on the eastern edge of Forsyth County located within our suburban neighborhoods growth management area. And you can see the location map with the subject property shown in yellow. Again, this is a request to rezone to RS20S. You can see in the top half of that map there is some RS20 in this area. This is located along the east side of Twin Creek Road. This is um, between I-40 and Sandy Ridge Road. And a portion of this parcel extends over into Guilford County. You'll see on the site plan here shortly. An aerial image showing the subject property, which is currently undeveloped. An image on site. This is on Twin Creek Road. The site is to the right. And this is across Twin Creek Road from the subject property. Here's an image from the Southeast Forsyth County update. Uh, this is the area plan for this area. It does recommend single family residential, so the request is consistent with the area plan recommendation. And this is the site plan submitted with this request, so it's obviously oriented a little differently than your previous maps. So north would be to the right in this image. You can see Twin Creek Road towards the top of this image. Two access points onto Twin Creek Road, a total of 48 lots. Um, 14 of those are either partially or completely within Guilford County. You can see the county line in the red dashed line right there towards the bottom of your screen. So in summary, the property is located in GMA3 and has access to public sewer. It generally complies with the RS20 district purpose statement and area plan recommendations. There is an existing RS20 zoning in the area and Twin Creek Road is a collector street, so it's got some capacity to handle any additional traffic. The request was heard by the planning board at their March 11th public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition and the planning board voted seven to zero to recommend approval of this request. And I'm glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Uh, one question. Yes, sir. Uh, is this the sewer available from uh, Guilford County or Forsyth County? Commissioner um, Linville, I believe it comes from um, Forsyth County. I will double check that for you. I'm going to turn on my layer here real quick and just confirm that for you. Would that be extended out of Kernersville? Extended from some of their lines or in the Kernersville area? Commissioner uh, Limble, I'm going to try to show you this if I can. Um, let me see if I can do this. 
hopefully you can see my screen there. Can you see the GIS map on the screen? Yes. Okay, so here in blue is the subject property, and you can see in this heavy black line is where the existing sewer comes. So it would come under Twin Creek and basically be in the top portion of this property. It would come from city county utilities. Okay. Thank you. Additional comments or questions? Yes, uh, Chairman, I do have a question. Um, I, from reading some of the comments um, from some of the constituents that live in that area, one of my questions is, um, is, are there any sentiments from the Southeast Council person representative um, relative to this work? Uh, Commissioner McDaniel, when you say the Southeast representative, are you speaking of Council Member Taylor, the Southeast Ward representative? That's correct, sir. Um, Commissioner McDaniel, uh, we did not send this to, to uh, the City Council for any comment. I'll share my screen once again just for some context. Um, you, if you can see the screen, you can see the subject property shown there in blue. Mm -hmm. This is actually a fairly good ways away from the city limits of Winston-Salem. That would be over here. You can kind of see the colored area here on the left-hand side of the screen. So it's a pretty good ways away. He, um, he, he did not comment and we did not send this since it was a pretty good ways away from the city limits of Winston-Salem. Okay. Thank you. I'll reach out to him. Thank you. Additional okay. questions or comments? Commissioners, let me make one comment here. Uh, everybody was right except me. We had a paper that stuck to the piece of another paper, and indeed it was, and you were right, uh, Mr. King, looking for uh, some kind of reaction on item five. We will take up item six as soon as we complete this one. Madam Clerk, have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for clarification earlier today. Following the requirements of Session Law 2020-3, the board will continue to have public comment on the matter of item 5 at 4 p.m. April 16th, 2021. If you wish to comment, call 703-2020. That's 703-2020 with a prefix of 336. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the zoning petition of Dennis Weevil and Edna Edwards, zoning docket F-1599, set forth in agenda item 6. And the speaker on this one will be Aaron King. Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is zoning docket F-1599. This is a request to rezone almost 71 acres, uh, west side Union Cross Road between Carl L. Clark Road and Axel Drive. And this is a special use no site plan rezoning from AG, which is agricultural, to LI limited use. So limited industrial, limited use. You can see the subject property there on Legacy's Growth Management Plan. This is in Growth Management Area 3. And there you can see the subject property shown in yellow. Uh, so just, uh, this is on the west side of Union Cross, as mentioned earlier, south of Glen High Road. And uh, just to the north of this site is Glen High uh, High School. And then just to the south of this would be the Caterpillar Manufacturing Facility. An aerial image showing the subject property. You can see it is, it is uh, undeveloped. And a few images taken on site. This would be on Union Cross Road. The subject property would be to the right. This is on Axel Drive. The site is to the left. An image from the Southeast Suburban Area Plan Update, which does recommend the subject property for industrial use. So this request is consistent with the area plan recommendations. And in summary, as I mentioned to you, it is consistent with the area plan. It's served with public water and sewer and is located adjacent to other, industrial, other industrially zoned properties. It's got frontage on Union Cross Road, which is a four-lane median divided road with ample capacity, and it includes a negative access condition along Carl L. Clark Road. This request was heard by the planning board at their March 11th public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition. And the planning board voted seven to zero to recommend approval of this request. Question and glad to answer. Four comments for Mr. Uh, King. One question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Fleming Elamine. Aaron, did you get any comments concerning additional traffic in that area, given that Glen High School is so close in proximity? Um, Commissioner Elamine, we reached out to the school system, to their representatives, and they were comfortable with the request. We didn't have any, and, and certainly the negative access easement along Carl L. Clark. Um, drive certainly helps with, with traffic going that way. There's definitely enough capacity on Union Cross Road to handle any additional traffic generated from this site. So, um, like I say, we, we did reach out to the schools and they were comfortable with this request. Okay. 
Well, I have a special concern for the sanctity of Glen High School, so just checking. Additional questions or comments? Ashley Sloop, do you have any comments or have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. Following the requirements of Session Law L-2020-3, the Board will continue to receive public comment on the matter until 4 p.m. on April 16th, 2021. And if you wish to submit a comment, call 336-703-2020. The next item on the agenda is an ordinance to amend actions of the UDO to align with North Carolina General Statutes 160D, otherwise known as UDO CC10. First speaker on this is Chris Murphy of the City County Planning Board. Mr. Murphy, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the County Commissioners, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this item, um, and actually, uh, I think I'm at the very end of my slideshow, so if you'll <laughs> hold on a second, that's what happens whenever we use technology. Welcome to the club. <laughs> that's right. Here we go. That's better. Uh, Planning and Development Services staff, in conjunction with both the city and the county attorney's office, uh, drafted a text amendment modifying numerous sections of the UDO to align with the General Assembly's combination of the separate city and county planning and development related statutes uh, into a combined set of statutes known as North Carolina General Statute 160D. Uh, these UDO changes are required and must be codified by June 30th, 2021. Uh, the creation of NCGS 160D is the first comprehensive recodification and modernization of the city and county planning and development regulations since 1905. This has been a collaborative multi-year effort which began in 2013. Uh, Chapter 160D consolidates the previous county enabling statutes 153A and the previous city enabling statutes 160A into a single unified statute 160D. Uh, the intent behind this call consolidation is similar to our efforts with UDO Clear Code, trying to make everything simpler in one place and more consistent language between both the city and the county. Uh, this item has been fully briefed before the commissioners at two different briefing sessions, so I'm not going to go into any in, in, in depth into the 29 different sections. Uh, I do have those sections off the end of my slideshow, but I don't want to actually um, belabor this with y'all, but for anyone in the public who is watching this, we have fully um, briefed the commissioners on all 29 of these sections, but some of the highlighted changes that are applicable uh, in the county, uh, this section, section three, aligns our ordinance with the statutes related to vesting uh, by providing some expanded vesting options for um, development approvals consistent with what's in the statutes. Uh, Section 12 updates and expands uh, what constitutes conflict of interest for the elected body whenever they are considering um, zoning map amendments and zoning text amendments. Uh, Section 14 codifies that the staff change authorizations that have previously been approved by resolution by both the city and the county in 1979 have to be incorporated into, into the ordinance. Um, that isn't any change in the process that we use. It's just that those processes have to be clearly stated and laid out in the ordinance for all to see. And Section 20 uh, mandates that temporary health care structures uh, must be allowed, um, provided the structures comply with the requirements of the statutes, which deal with some size limitations, where they have to be located, and time frames. Uh, once uh, the person is either well or no longer with us, those health care facilities must be removed within a specified period of time. Uh, UDO CC10 provides the required changes necessitated with the creation of the Unified 160D. Uh, we've been monitoring this legislation for a number of years. It had a number of fits and starts. It got approved, I think, at 18 or 19, but because of COVID, the effective date has been pushed back a couple times. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we did work closely with the city and the county attorney's offices leading up to the drafting of the language, and both offices have reviewed the draft changes. Uh, staff finds that there is no impact on a majority of the amendments and only minimal impact on the balance. And regardless of impact, these changes are required by statute. Uh, this item was considered by the planning board at their March 11th public hearing and was unanimously recommended for approval. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, this has been fully briefed at two commissioner briefing sessions, and staff does recommend approval of UDO CC10. 
comments or questions for Mr. Murphy? Madam Clerk, have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? No, Mr. Chairman. Following the requirements of Session Law 2020-3, the Board will continue to receive public comment on this matter until 4 p.m. April 16th, 2021. Thank you very much, Mr. Murphy. If you wish to submit a comment in this, in this matter, call 703-2020 with a prefix of 336. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes for the meeting of April 1st, 2021. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. <laughs> motion to approve by Commissioner Elamine and Commissioner Martin. Do I hear a second? Second by Commissioner McDaniel. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Mm. Ashley Sloop. The next item on the agenda is the public session where people have the opportunity to speak about the problems, needs, and interests in our county. Do we have any calls? Mr. Chairman, we have two callers. You're on. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners Public Session Line. This session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. Duck McManus, 130 Secret Garden Lane, Apartment 6. Thank you. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each and a 30 second warning will be given. You may begin. <laughs> I'm calling with Triad Abolition Project and the Forsyth County Police Accountability and Reallocation Coalition. Agenda item 12 explains that $500,000 is being appropriated into the Youth Services Fund because youth detention has increased in the past year with the effects of the Rage the Age legislation. We are concerned that cost for youth detention has risen to $920,000 this year and also concerned that this demonstrates the county budget increasing for incarceration of our community members. And so we continue to demand that the county commissioners and county manager reallocate funds from the bloated sheriff's department budget and other incarceration systems such as youth services towards programs that serve as sources of anti-poverty initiatives and accessible community care funds that reduce the harms of carceral systems. It is our hope that we, as a Forsyth County community, will continue to push for the creation of new and thriving alternatives to the county and city services of policing and incarceration. In addition to the work towards creating and funding more services for crime prevention for our youth, we would also love to support work towards responding to mental health crisis calls with mental health professionals rather than deputies. Our county continues to mourn the murders of black men at the hands of officers and now nationwide sets towards divesting from policing services with reinvestment in community care initiatives is not only visionary work done by social justice leaders, but also a reality as it is happening in the new budget cycles in Minneapolis, Austin, LA, Milwaukee, and more. The opioid crisis and mental health crises continue to exist in our community, and policing and incarceration will not prevent or provide treatment for our community members facing these challenges. We ask that the county commissioners and county managers work together towards creating a mental health crisis unit that responds to mental health and substance abuse crisis calls made to 911. And we ask that this initiative is a diversion model that does not involve deputy. Furthermore, as we know, the county is approaching decisions on the health care provider contract within the detention center. We hope that this work pushes towards health care services that are local and not part of a privatized health care complex. Thank you for attention to these matters. I yield my time. Thank you very much. Very thoughtful. You are now available. Thank you. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners Public Session Line. This session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Sarah. My address is 1447 West 4th Street, Winston-Salem. Sarah, what is your last name? Hi. Thank you. 
Speakers will be limited to three minutes each, and a 30-second warning will be given. You may begin. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah. I live in the 27101 zip code. I am calling with Triad Abolition Project and the Forsyth County Police Accountability and Reallocation Coalition. In a meeting on January 21st, 2021, we inquired of the county commissioners about the approval of a one-year contract for Hunter D. Laughlin to continue his media work for the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office Facebook news shows. We are continuing to ask for clarity as to why FCSO needs this Facebook media resource when the local news media is regularly in contact with the FCSO and accurately reports on matters occurring in our community. Furthermore, we would like to know how much does it cost for in further resources to maintain the FCSO news show and how can this information be made transparent to the public taxpayers who obviously pay for this. We do not agree with tax dollars being allocated toward law enforcement centered media where we know there are blatant inconsistencies in their reporting of the truth. In addition, the FSCO, the FCSO continues to publicly market for Forsyth County residents to register their private doorbell cameras in order to assist law enforcement in their quest to further police our community by using the Real-Time Intelligence Center video marketing campaign, which consists of a movie-style dramatic scene illustrating a family at home being watched by a mass would-be intruder. Elsewhere is shown a dispatcher surrounded by su surveillance screens, one of which is showing an official monitoring the family's doorbell footage in real time, with an officer then heroically swooping in just in time to arrest the prowler on site. The inconsistent and misleading message here is that employees of the RTIC will be monitoring someone's camera footage on their doorbell at all times, attempting to manufacture consent by implying that you will feel safer as if it's because they are always watching, when in reality, it is simply harmful and invasive surveillance. A post on their Facebook page reads, enrolling your system does not allow us to access your cameras. It simply builds a database where cameras are located. You have 30 yet, seconds. Yet the entire marketing campaign shows the opposite of what they claim. We do not want our tax dollars allocated to law enforcement media that does not intervene when people in the community are encouraging hate and harmful acts in the comment section of such social media accounts. A simple scroll through the, the Facebook page reveals some interesting insights. There have been comments made that encourage violence and hate toward others in our community. Ma'am, your time is up. Thank you, Ashley Stoop. Good job. We'll turn the meeting over to Dudley Watts, our county manager, for the remainder of the agenda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. We do have some business items for consideration this afternoon. We have reviewed these through briefing sessions and hopefully have answered all the questions you might have. I did want to mention I had one item that I had inadvertently moved over to the, uh, the scheduled briefing item that I do want to, to walk back in if I can. So um, I'll go ahead and dive into the agenda. Item 10 is a resolution authorizing acceptance of a grant from the North Carolina Agricultural Foundation Incorporated. It was awarded to the North Carolina Cooperative Extension for Scythe County Center for improvements to the Arboretum at Tanglewood Park. We've got an associated budget ordinance amendment that would appropriate the grant of $21,600, which will fund improvements to the irrigation system. There is an $8,000 amount that would be paid from a previously received Winston-Salem Foundation grant. Questions? Motion. To approve. Motion to approve by Commissioners Fleming Alamine and Don Martin. Second. By Commissioner Ted Kaplan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Agenda item 11 is an amendment to the 2020 Motor Vehicle and Mobile Equipment Replacement Capital Projects Ordinance. It appropriates $93,295 of surplus proceeds that were received at the recent auction. There is a breakdown of where those dollars are allocated in that uh, capital projects fund in the agenda item. Comments, questions? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Elamine. Second. Second by Commissioner Richard Linville. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Item 12 is an amendment to the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget ordinance. It appropriates $500,000 from unreserved fund balance for youth detention costs. Um, and this is based on projections. It is impacted by the raise the age uh, provisions that were uh, that we had we had experienced, um, and then also the other factors such as COVID. Questions or comments? Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 13 is an amendment to the 2016 Schools Capital Projects Ordinance, and this appropriates that um, some additional bond, school bonds of $34,136,949. I'll quickly read through the, the authorization and the, the accounts these will go into this maintenance and capital projects of $7,265,000. Metal art traffic improvements of $894,695.50. Safety and camera updates of $215,999.50. Griffith Elementary School Edition of $1.4 million. Ashley Design of $900,000. East Forsyth High School, $1,500,000. Uh, John F. Kennedy renovations at $20,461,254. And Ward Elementary School Edition of $1.5 million. Questions, comments, motion? I, I have one curiosity Yes, sir, question. go right ahead. Um, and and, and I, I saw Daryl here earlier. Um, in, when, the, when the bond issue, this was passed in 2016, I guess, what were sort of the budgets of some of these projects? I, I'm, I'm just kind of particularly curious about the, how much sort of inflation guesstimates are going into the JFK renovation. Just Glad you're here, Daryl Walker. Yeah, thank you. Good to be with you. Uh, yeah, the JFK renovation, um, you may recall, uh, Dr. Martin, back your time, we, we did a design work. Can I step up or am I okay back here? Oh, no, that's for the yeah, yeah, you're good. And you can take your mask off since we okay. got the, you. the, uh, the JFK project was actually designed at the end of the 06 bond with some savings. I remember that. And so the, the, the dollars associated with this is the true construction cost around that project. And what, what, what was the budget when the bond issue passed in 2016? For JFK? Yes. This, this 2461 was that It was that much at that point? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, that's good. This is doing re, renewing the cafeteria, all that kind of stuff kind of combined? Yeah, redoing uh, the magnet program, classroom, uh, some renovation. We're actually going to have to move the students out uh, this summer. We're going to start this work this summer, move them to Went Sound Prep do the construction to be able to move the project along quicker to, and then move the program back. Okay, thanks. Additional questions? Um, Chairman, I do have a question, but it's not relative to this while um, um, Daryl's here. Hi, Daryl, how are hey, you? Good morning, good um, afternoon. Just a quick question, and if you don't have the answer now, if you can bring it back, but um, I'd like to know what's happening with the school buses um, from off of Culver School Road and where they're being allocated. There was some concern about some of the buses being um, placed over at the old Haines Laurent School. Yeah, right now those buses have been allocated to. There was 140 some buses as part of the move from the sale of the property. Yeah. Those buses are at uh, Walkertown Elementary, East Forsyth Middle, Abraham Elementary, and uh, Paisley Laurent. Okay, so. Pays the rent, it's not yes, being stuck. No, oh, okay, fair enough. Well, yes, thank you very much for yes, that. Thank you, Chairman. Additional comments? Just one, one question, Darrell. Fleming Alamine. <clears throat> the allocation for JFK renovations of $20 million, the optics seems to be a little high. What's involved in that $20 million? So renovation there, it's again? a pretty major renovation to the whole facility uh, there at Kennedy. Um, basically, all new window. It, it kind of, Quite honestly, we're kind of gutting it and kind of starting over and keeping the outside walls. Uh, so putting in new windows, new classroom renovations and all that, new technology, all that. There's some magnet programs there as part of that that gets um, kind of a revamp um, that that um, um, as part of this bond uh, program as well. So it's it's it will it will look brand new on the inside when all is said and done. Okay. And one somewhat related question: <laughs> I was in a meeting with. The Housing Authority people yesterday, a little advisory panel they had, and they were discussing submitting another proposal to HUD to get funding <clears throat> for a community project. The first one was rejected. And I asked them had they linked up at all with the school system to discuss what's going to take place there since ASH will be built in close proximity. 
and they said they had reached out to the school system and got no response thus far. Do you know anything about that at all? I, I do not, uh, and I'm not. I, I will tell you that the discussions we had around the location that we purchased Ashley uh, was to have a school, a daycare, a pre-K, a health clinic, and a dental clinic in order to support the families in that community. And they would be funded. We would only build the school K five P or pre K through five piece, and that the other facilities was was kind of a rolled up and part of the grant and or foundation funding. Okay. Is that what you're talking? Is yes, that precisely? <clears throat> yeah. So that was all the that was a conversation from day one, as part of uh, our part as as uh, an educational component, and then some wraparound services. Uh, for that project and that grant. Okay, thank you. Well, Daryl Walker, we appreciate you taking your time to explain all this. It's a pretty, what's the total amount of the package? Again, um, I hate to say that, just out of curiosity, there's a lot of money. 34, 136, 949. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I, I will tell you, uh, just so, construction prices as we've seen them, um, it's been interesting, you know, we, we budgeted around 190 when we started the bond or planning in 2014, they went. They've been up a size 250 dollars a square foot. Um, I've seen a little bit of an adjustment on the construction side, but no adjustment on this from, from a supply perspective. It's and amazing. the demand yeah. perspective on supplies is turnaround time and and has, has been really delayed. Well, sure, glad you're here. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm glad you came in, yeah. Mr. County Manager. All right. Thank you, Daryl. Um, did we? Did you get a motion second on that? Um, I don't think we did. Do we need a motion here? Mm -hmm. Oh, who wants I, to I make, make a motion? Oh, second. Don Martin says he will make the motion. <laughs> second. Second by Commissioner Fleming. I mean, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 14 and 15 probably can be taken together. They're both re resolutions authorizing these mon quantum Beirut payments to uh, both WellPath LLC and Legal Aid of North Carolina. The WellPath item is for Vivitrol injections from the District Attorney's Treatment uh, Alternative or Data Program. And the one for the Legal Aid was basically to transfer funds to pay an invoice. Uh, the situation here with both cases is that the invoices were received and processed after the period of accounting period was closed out, and so we just need to take this action. Comments or questions? Motion? To move. Motion to approve by Commissioner Don Martin. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming Alamine. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 16 is a resolution authorizing the execution of an engagement letter and audit contract with Elliott Davis PLLC to complete the annual independent audit for Forsyth County for fiscal year 2021-2022, subject to approval by the Secretary of the Local Government Commission. It is in an amount not to exceed $67,400. Questions? To approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. Second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 17 is a resolution awarding and authorizing the execution of contracts for enterprise resource planning, software, and implementation uh, services. You've got an associated amendment to the 2019 PAYGO Capital Projects Ordinance and an amendment to the fiscal year 2020-21 budget ordinance. Those are really geared around appropriating $85,000 for the fourth quarter fiscal year 21 funds that are required for the project. And, and, and this is the uh, administrative systems that really drive the business processes up for Scythe County government. The five-year costs are substantial. They're seven million five hundred thirty-seven thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars and eighty-eight cents. Questions? Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Gloria Huizenhunt. Second. Second by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 18 is resolution approving the donation of a surplus county vehicle to the Forsyth County Humane Society and SPCA Incorporated pursuant to the general statutes that provide for that. It is a 2002 Dodge Caravan they'll use to basically transport animals between their two facilities. Comments? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Alamine. Second. Second by Commissioner Richard Linville. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 19 is a resolution designating new review officers to review and certify maps and plats for Forsyth County, North Carolina in accordance with North Carolina general statutes. The list is shown in the agenda item. Comments? Motion. Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Gloria Wisenhunt. 
Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 20 and 21 you can take together. They are both resolution in approving refunds by the tax of the collector and the assessor in the amount of $1,070.74 and $467.98 respectively. Comments? Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 22 is an ordinance revising Chapter 1, General Provisions, Chapter 7, Building and Building Regulations, Chapter 9, Emergency Management, Chapter 20, Streets, and Chapter 25, Appearance Commission of the Forsyth County Code. This essentially codifies Chapter 160D, um, as was provided in the item that you approved earlier, and there are a few technical corrections that it does address. Questions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. Second. Okay. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, agenda item 23 of the reports. You've got the auction surplus summary, the contribution based benefit report, and the appropriation transfers report from January and February. Questions? Move to receive reports. Motion to receive reports from Commissioner Richard Linville. Second. Second by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. All in favor <laughs> say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 24 is added, and I had mentioned it to board members. It is a resolution adopting the revised Forsyth County Board of Commissioners meeting schedule for 2021. And I will really point to um, uh, May. We had originally had the budget being presented on May 13th. Uh, this, uh, this schedule really takes us through a normal meeting schedule in May. On May 27th, we would make that formal presentation to the board of the budget. Um, on the next week, we would go through that detailed presentation review where we spend the day uh, on June 3rd. Uh, we would have the public hearing on June 7th, and then we would immediately go into budget workshops the 8th, 9th, and 10th of June with a possible budget adoption of June 10th. Obviously, if we are not ready, the statutory requirements is to have it approved uh, before the end of, end of June and before July 1 begins. The other change is in the NACO conference uh, that um, that is there, Madam Clerk. Can you point to that uh, that change for the board? No break. Commissioners, if you look at the bottom of your screen, my cursor is moving. And last week we talked about um, two options for July, and the board chose to, the first two weeks of July to be off and that coincides with the change in the NACO annual conference that's going to be in Maryland. And then there will be a meeting on the 29th of July, which will take us into August. Any questions or comments on this one? Yes, we do. Well, we need a motion. You're going to take it 24 and 25 together, is that right, Don? Uh, let me let me introduce 25 separate. All right, sure. Yeah, we would essentially this will authorize a, us to publish the motion. The meeting. okay. Uh, motion to approve on item 24 by Ted Kaplan. Second. Okay. Second by Commissioners Fleming Elamine and Tanya McDaniel. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And now to round out a 25 item agenda. Teachers are the focus of our county manager. Okay. Well, I was just going to introduce it. I do have one added item, so make it 26. But um, uh, <laughs> item 25 is a resolution recognizing May 3rd through 7th, uh, 2021, as Teacher Appreciation Week. And I, I didn't know, Mr. Chairman, you have so many people on that uh, uh, at that dais that have different, um, either were teachers or um, were on the Board of Education, or you know, whoever wants to comment on that would be better, more, more qualified than me. So. You know, look at the board. Former school superintendent is to my right. Gloria Wissenhunt was on the school board back in the day when schools were log cabins and <laughs> Abraham Lincoln was splitting wood. <laughs> Maybe I exaggerated there a little bit. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is, a, from my perspective, I have two daughters who are teachers, and I'm very proud of them, and I'm, I'm just delighted that we, we have 4,200 teachers who are teaching as we speak. It's, um, it's a really great item, and I hope we can do everything we can to make the teachers know that we appreciate them year-round, but May 3 through 7 as something special. 
Well, I, and I'll certainly comment. I want to, and I'll certainly thank uh, Commissioner Fleming Elamine because he has many years in the classroom. That's right. It's a, a tremendous amount of uh, extremely challenging work, and this has been an ex extremely challenging year. And I'd like to compliment uh, um, all those in the school district that came up with this idea. Of, well, the, 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 the appreciation week has been a part of it, but I think this the particular um, sort of video picture show for teachers was a great idea. I know that Brent Campbell sent out um, emails to um, both to the, the county commissioners and we're doing one with our picture and as well as others. And I, I think that's a nice gesture to, to try to say thanks uh, to, a, to a group of folks that have really had a very challenging year and do really important work, um, quite frankly, that preserves the democracy of our country. So I, I wanna thank them. You know, I'd love to have been in one of uh, Fleming Elamine's classes <laughs> that would be an experience. <laughs> Any further comments? If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Don Martin, for the comment. I appreciate it very much, sir. Uh, we, you know, we live in a democratic society in principle, but the only equalizer we really have is a good public school because it allows every child, regardless of zip code, to achieve the best based on their abilities. That's the theory. So I honor every teacher who puts their life on the line every day to do the best they can do in a classroom with a lot of challenges, especially during this COVID-19 experience that we all have somewhat had to adjust our whole lives to. I had just one small incident with my nine of my 13 grandkids trying to assist them on a screen <laughs> on a lesson in mathematics. And I'm supposed to be pretty much educated, <laughs> but I was frustrated to the high end. So for a teacher to be doing that the whole year uh, and stick to it, do the best they could to teach in that fashion is a remarkable achievement. So I think we should applaud them and support them to the best of our abilities. And congratulations, teachers. And you are the best hope we have for America. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Gloria Wisenhunt. Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Mr. Manager? Any Thank further you. comments? Uh, yes, sir. So you've got a, uh, at your place a hard copy of an agenda item, which is actually out of the new system that we are going to roll out next week. And so it does look a little bit different than some of the previous agenda items. Um, it was on the agenda as we finalized that agenda last Thursday. There were um, comments about where the dollars to fund the, um, the, group, the contract with Greater Winston-Salem, Inc. would come from. Uh, decision was made to, to, to uh, basically apply those to the airport reserve funds. And um, so based on that conversation, I reached out to Mark Davidson. Mark reached out to the board. Um, there generally were positive comments around it. There was some, um, some desire to have uh, the, a discussion at the airport board meeting, which is next Tuesday. Um, and part of that is going to be their budget discussion and some other things. And so um, I, ended, I, in error, uh, moved it from the formal meeting agenda to the briefing agenda um, where it should have been left on this agenda as, a, as an agenda item um, for the board's consideration this afternoon. So it is in front of you. You know, the question really was, a, you know, the courtesy to um, uh, airport commission to, to provide feedback on that. And so, um, so I bring this item to you it, just real quickly. It does appropriate $150,000 of unreserved fund balance uh, from the airport uh, board. Um, and that is obviously those funds, you are the custodian of those dollars. Those are yours to appropriate and the, the airport commission cannot, or the airport uh, advisory board cannot do that by themselves. It does f really have three deliverables from that, uh, which is um, uh, the continued development of an unmanned traffic management concept of operations, building on and refining the preliminary recommendations from the FAA and North Carolina Department of Transportation, development of a proposal to submit to NASA's national campaign to include Winston-Salem for Scythe County as a partner location for air, advanced air mobility focused research and testing, and then finally preparation of requests for proposals for specific capital infrastructure investment necessary to meet industry requirements, including radar and weather sensing equipment. You know, it is the hopes that the state will fund the, the large portion of this, and I understand that there is um, activity around trying to secure $5 million from the state of North Carolina to do that. So this item is in front of you uh, for your consideration. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I, I'd like to make a motion to, to extend that courtesy to the airport commission for next Tuesday, but I know there was a, a question about time of being of the essence. I'd like to request that we table this item until next Thursday and that we make next Thursday a one item special meeting in addition to our briefing and that we could advertise that for a one item um, uh, item to, that we could act on this next Thursday. Commissioner Kaplan. Uh, Commissioner Martin mentioned this to me yesterday. Uh, I, I have no problem with the schedule. I, I don't I don't have I don't think it's that urgent a matter. However, I do want this board to understand that this is sort of a new process uh, for the airport commission and for our board in that, as I mentioned before, the FAA has rules and regulations on how many can be used that is gained by the airport. Uh, so it, it basically has to be used for the airport or for aviation interests. This fits into that, and that's one of the reasons I wanted the airport board to take a look at it uh, and say grace if they want to. This will come from their their budget item and not the general county, uh, the county fund. So uh, I hope that in the future we can allow the airport board to take this these issues up and decide of their merit and then if it has to come to us because of a certain amount limit, then that would be great. So you're supporting way to use some of that airport money and not affect the county. You're supporting uh, Commissioner Martin's motion. Uh, I do. Okay. Any further comments? Now you want this on the agenda next Tuesday or yeah, Thursday? It's just a table until next Thursday. Thursday we have okay. a special meeting for just that topic. Further that discussion. One item. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? A second. Uh, we got a motion from Commissioner Don Martin, second by Commissioner El Amin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're close to adjournment. Any further comments on this particular session of the board? Mr. Chairman, part yes, of privilege, please. Uh, we have a distinguished person among us who's celebrating a birthday very soon, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Tanya McDaniels. We should all sing in harmony. Happy birthday on three. Yeah. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Tanya. Tanya. <laughs> Good it's going. Big, it's a big birthday, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's what he wants to know how old you are. Five years old. Fifty, the big five old. Five big round of old. applause when you reach that far. <laughs> <laughs> any any comments from the staff regarding Mrs. McDaniel? <laughs> but we love her. There you go, <laughs> there you, go Tanya. You, you got away with that's good. Okay, well if there's n we we will take a break for about uh, oh I'd say eight minutes to. Um, rest recuperate I was just thinking when I started to say a couple of things there Dudley but you talked about you made an error and I thought well I went from page four to page six and didn't even realize I'd done it you know what <laughs> it does happen but this has been a good day and uh, we'll be back in eight minutes with this um, motion to adjourn by Commissioner Kaplan I'll second the motion we're adjourned <laughs>